talking about the movie Nereus. Uh, this is a creature feature aquatic style horror movie with a difference. This movie is also known as The Complex. So this one is directed by Georgios Padley who also co-wrote this as one of, one of its stars is Ita Martinez. So the story takes place in this kind of motel complex which has this swing ball. Now there seems to be some type of ancient entity that actually lives within the waters of this swimming pool. And ultimately it kind of wants to take human lives as sustenance, I'm assuming. And it focuses on this kind of group of young adults who are kind of unawares of what's going on. And we see a kind of a prologue where it ultimately kind of dissolves this kind of girl and kind of, so she literally just disappears. So there's no evidence of, of kind of foul play. So she just disappeared. Uh, so we have this kind of group of kind of like young adults and um, we have this one girl that kind of turns up after kind of her parents have died and she's kind of a bit of a recluse. And this one is actually played by the, the woman who co-wrote this, Azita Martinez. And, um, you, know, she's, you know, she's kind of welcomed into this complex by one of her friends and she starts to kind of get a, a, a gist of something might, might not be quite, quite right here as kind of the movie progresses and as we learn... Uh, there's kind of more kind of like the might be kind of people involved and such and ultimately what will happen you have to watch the movie to find out so it's it's kind of let's talk about what works first of all with this film for me the biggest positive i would say with this film it's kind of a really kind of a water kind of spirit a water demon uh that kind of like it's just invisible and kind of within the water it's fairly unique i don't remember seeing anything quite like this um the the there's not it's actually quite light in effects, but we do see some. And when the kind of the water spirit or entity, whatever you want to call it, does present itself, it kind of looks a little bit like James Cameron's Abyss or maybe Terminator 2 with that kind of like that CGI kind of water effect. Now, albeit this is a very low budget film, but I actually quite like the effect here. I thought it would it's been a little while since I've kind of seen and effects like this and despite it being kind of low budget and really you don't see much of it but when you do I actually thought it was quite fun and I've got to say I quite enjoyed it but I like the concept here um, because it kind of does present um, uh, almost a unique challenge and kind of something you haven't really seen I mean I love aquatic horror movies so this is kind of unlike a lot of uh, anything else really that I've kind of seen before so that was that was actually a massive positive here there's also some really fun ideas that this movie has. One idea that I particularly liked is, and it's early on, is um, this kind of this, this kind of new girl. She kind of comes into this kind of a plot of a you know motel complex, and she you know she thinks she's laying in bed, but the kind of the, the entity has somehow tr transported her from her bed into the pool. So she's kind of like drowning, but doesn't kind of realising it. She's kind of thinks she's dreaming and stuff, and uh, it kind of keeps doing it and. Um, Obviously, that's when, kind of when she gets wind of something that well, is not right here. She, she thinks she might have been drinking, but it's it's quite neat. It's quite a neat way to kind of uh, uh, try and kind of get your victims. That was all. That that was quite fun. And I also thought uh, just the kind of the the, the, the fact that this the majority of this movie is actually filmed within this kind of motel complex. And it's I think it's Florida. It's going to take place in. Again, it's it's kind of maybe um, a not a typical kind of setting for. Uh, a horror movie like this. There's also a, a really, although it does seem very bizarre and out of place, there's a bizarre sequence um, that is found footage that ultimately turns into a zombie film. I'm not kidding. So in the middle of this movie, there is a sequence that takes place, I think it's going to be Greece, with another character who we see leave at the beginning of the film, um, have a kind of a zombie attack. It is related to the plot, tangentially, admittedly, or tenuously. But nonetheless, yeah, it's actually that was actually quite a fun sequence and, and you know, it was, was really the kind of the only part of the movie that might be a little scary, I would say. 
Um, the, remain, the remainder of this movie isn't scary at all, but this one can is more of your traditional style kind of found footage zombie film uh, with some quite neat sound effects. I thought that was actually handled quite well, although it's just bizarre that it comes out of nowhere. And it, it, does, it does have a real big gripe as well because, um, you know, there's these two people that go to this kind of monastery in the night for some reason. Why don't they go in the day? It's not one question. And then as soon as they get, they're just about to go up, this one, get in the actual building, this one guy pipes up and says, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, there's many of these undead guardians here. But come on, I mean, you're not going to forget about that little detail, are you? Anyway, but they still go in. So, although it's silly, I kind of still kind of like the sequence. But silly is kind of the name of the game with this film, um, because I do feel this movie, like that sequence I've just described, has some kind of silly kind of plot points and kind of in uh, and uh, and story elements here and I didn't I don't know if the kind of the narrative element works that particularly that particularly well um, I don't want to go into spoilers but for me there, there was no attempt by any of the protagonists once they're kind of aware of this to try some basic things to try and kind of uh, uh, remove this entity I mean alcohol is um, you know, dehydrate you and stuff like this, and pour it in the pool or drain the pool or something. Nothing, nothing, no basic attempt like that. I mean, it may, it may have been, you know, not worked, but we, we, it would have made sense for these to see these people try this sort of thing at least. Um, but there's just some kind of like, the, the, the way the story goes here, to save money, and I'm assuming that's what it is, there's a lot of filler in this film. So the, the vast majority of, of running time is people running around this kind of uh, um, this motel complex or the kind of the neighborhood chasing after someone or, or doing something or just kind of like personal relationships. There's actually kind of a murder plot here um, as well from one, kind of like a backstory. And it's just done to kind of pad out the running time because the actual creature attacks or the actual things that involve this creature are minimal to say the least we see a little bit of the kind of the beginning and then it's, we really don't see anything to do with it again until right towards the end of the movie to be honest with you so the bulk of this running time is actually nothing to do with the actual you know creature itself the spirit itself it's just kind of people running around uh you know chasing down leads and that kind of stuff so it becomes a little bit of a drag um, unfortunately, now I'm assuming this is down purely to budget restraints because obviously doing the CGI effect is probably the most expensive thing in this movie. But I've got to tell you that I appreciate that, but it doesn't change the fact that it makes a film a little dull because of it. And I feel that there's a lot of kind of like these kind of little B plots that you'll get just to kind of fill out the running time. To be honest with you, um, so there you go. It makes it a little a little dull. Um, the acting, it, 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 it's just, it feels a little forced at times. It's just, I wouldn't say necessarily bad acting, but there are some kind of moments here where I just felt the, um, the acting was somewhat stilted from some of the kind of performances at least. And, uh, um, I mean, I don't, it sounds like some of the kind of the, uh, the, the cart, uh, English isn't, isn't the first language. Um, but no, it was just not, not bad necessarily, but there, there was a few instances for me where people just didn't ring true and, I mean, some of the kind of the cheesy stuff that happens, I mean, it, it is kind of pretty cheesy at the end of the day. Um, again, with kind of like cheesy dialogue and some kind of, kind of ropey acting. You know, it's a B-movie horror film, you know, I'm not expecting kind of anything too bad here. This is one kind of, I don't feel like I'm ragging on it too much with this, but I feel I should just kind of point it out. I thought the actual conflict at the end was quite fun. I, I actually quite enjoyed that. Um, but unfortunately, that's kind of a long way into it at that point. And you're thinking, oh, you know, this is, this is kind of what I wanted more throughout the movie. So overall, I feel this movie has some good ideas. And it's a, an original concept, which I really appreciated. And to me, that actually goes a long way. I'd rather see a swing and a miss than just kind of like the generic old shit. So I do give it some props for trying to do something which has got a something we haven't seen before, and, and you know that kind of to me gives me gives me a move up from maybe a four to a five. So I will I'll give this movie a five out of ten. I don't think the quality is fantastic, but I appreciate having kind of somewhat of a unique and, and fun idea here. 
So five out of ten for me. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.